signals from the environment. Plants are no exception. But, unlike animals, plants don't have nerves for controlling and coordinating their activities. So how do they respond to stimuli? Plants respond to stimuli with the help of chemical compounds secreted by cells whenever needed. In this lesson, you will learn about the types of coordination in plants. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to differentiate between plant movements due to growth and plant movements independent of growth. Explain different types of tropic movement in plants. Compare and contrast movement in multicellular organisms. Describe chemical coordination in plants. Describe plant hormones and their functions. Plants show two different types of movement, one independent of growth and the other dependent on growth. For example, the touch-me-not plant of the mimosa family folds up and droops when touched. The leaves of the sensitive plant move quickly in response to touch, but this movement is not associated with any growth. However, when a seed germinates, the root grows downwards while the stem grows upwards into the air. This movement of a plant is an example of growth. Plant movement during growth of the plant can be directional or non-directional. If movement occurs in the direction of the stimulus, it is known as tropic movement. Environmental triggers such as light or gravity determine the direction of growth of a plant. The most common tropic movements are phototropism and geotropism. Growth towards a stimulus is a positive tropism, while growth away from a stimulus is a negative tropism. Shoots respond by bending towards light, thus showing positive phototropism. They grow away from gravity thus showing negative geotropism. Roots bend away from light, indicating negative phototropism and grow towards gravity, indicating positive geotropism. The pea plant climbs up other plants or fences by means of tendrils, which are sensitive to touch. When the plant comes in contact with any support, it entwines itself around the object and clings to it. This is an example of thigmotropism. So, we see that plants respond to stimuli slowly by growing in a particular direction. As this growth is directional, it appears as if the plant is moving. Hydrotropism is another growth response in which the direction is determined by the stimuli of water. Chemotropism is movement caused by chemical stimulus. The growth of pollen tubes towards ovules is an example of this type of tropism. Let's contrast the movement in plants with movement in animals. The movement of a sensitive plant in response to touch is very quick whereas the movement of a sunflower in response to day or night is quite slow. Growth related movement of plants will be even slower. As such, animal bodies 
also exhibit controlled directions to growth. Our arms and fingers grow in a certain direction and not haphazardly. Controlled movements can be slow or fast. For fast responses, the information transfer has to be quick. Electrical impulses are an excellent means for that. But electrical impulses reach only those cells that are connected by nervous tissue and not every cell in an animal body. Cells also cannot continually create and transmit electrical impulses. Instead, chemical communication is used. Stimulated cells release chemical compounds called hormones which diffuse all around the cell. If other cells around have the means to detect this compound using receptors on their surfaces, then they would be able to recognize information and even transmit it. This is a slower process but can potentially reach all cells regardless of nervous connections. Plants have various hormones which help to coordinate growth, development and response to the environment. They are synthesized at places away from where they act and simply diffuse to the area of action. Let's consider the first example of the sensitive plant responding to touch. There aren't any nervous or muscle tissues to detect touch. So how do the leaves move in response? Like animals, plants also use an electrical chemical means to convey this information from cell to cell. That is why the point where a plant has been touched differs from the part that actually moves. Here is an example of the mimosa plant where chemicals and movement of water in plant cells control the movement of leaves. This movement is independent of growth. Again, like animals, plant cells must change shape in order for movement to happen. Instead of the specialized proteins found in animal muscle cells, plant cells change shape by changing the amount of water in them, resulting in swelling or shrinking, and therefore in changing shapes. This type of response is called nastic response. Unlike tropisms, movement in plants do not occur in the direction of the stimulus. Some other examples are the opening and closing of flowers and the movement of the Venus flytrap. Let's study the different types of plant hormones. Auxins. They are synthesized at the tip of their shoots and help the plant to grow. When one side of the plant is exposed to light, auxin diffuses towards the shady side of the shoot. This concentration of auxin stimulates the cells to grow longer on the side of the shoot which is away from light. Thus, the plant appears to bend towards light. They also promote cell enlargement and cell differentiation in plants. Gibberellins They help in the elongation of internode and play a role in the growth of the plant along with auxins. Cytokinins promote cell division. They are present in large numbers in areas of rapid cell division such as fruits and seeds. 
they also promote the opening of the stomata. Plants also need signals to stop growing, and these are provided by the hormone abscisic acid, which inhibits growth. Its effects include the wilting of leaves and also promote the closing of the stomata.